So this, this week's lab, uh, we are going to extract a website that is called Indeed. Uh, I think most of you have heard that one. So especially if you are now looking for intern, um, so you may already search uh, some intern opportunities on Indeed. Uh, the Python code of this lab is provided uh, because uh, considering the technical difficulties, so I provided the Python code for you. So uh, if you go to my GitHub page, and also click the data mining on social media. Actually, the URL is also provided in the uh, lab instruction. So you go to others. And here you can see there are several um, Python code. So the one we are going to use is called extract, extract job post from Indeed. So let's open that one. OK, uh, so you can see this is uh, uh, the code that uh, I provided. So first, make sure that you read the, this will extract job posts from Indeed. So if you, just in case you never know Indeed, Indeed is a website that lists a lot of job information. So for example, if I want to see uh, intelligence analysis or uh, and I find job, OK, and so there are a lot of job inf informations. And if you click, and you will see the, more, the detailed information. OK, um, so that is indeed. And also, make sure that before you uh, extract data from any websites, make sure you check their robust.txt file. Um, so let's see if they allow you to do some specific search. So for example, they don't allow you to search everything that combined with and ALID and also the other informations. Okay. Uh, and next, we are going to uh, run those code to, in our SageMaker instance. So we can download this um, code. So if you go to the raw and I'll select save link as, so that will save this uh, notebook into a local computer. Uh, and next, if we go to our SageMaker instance, and we can click Upload. So we just downloaded from the GitHub, from my repository, uh, you can upload. And you can go to your Downloads folder, or uh, the folder where you downloaded this notebook, and you can upload this notebook. And see, Upload. And before you upload, we can also change the name, so let's call it Lab6. OK, so now we have successfully uploaded this one, Lab 6. And let's just open it. OK, so everything looks everything looks right. OK, uh, so let's run those code. And also, um, in the meantime, you can ask yourself so what she, each cell means. So the first cell, obviously, we all need to um, install those necessary Python code libraries like pandas, um, config parser and also PSY COPG. So those are for the man handles uh, databases. So let's run that. Okay, and just wait until that is finished. So when you see uh, the star becomes a number, so that is finished. And we can ignore the warnings. And make sure that we run all the cells um, in a one by one. So if you miss some cells, then you may have errors. The next is that we're going to load those sensitive information from this configure.ini. So remember that we are we already have this configure.ini on SageMaker. So and also the Python code is also customized for that for your configure.ini. So so we don't need to change anything in this configure.ini. And we are going to load those connection informations. And next we're going to establish a connection to the database and also create, create a cursor, and which is success. OK, so that's great. So now we have connected to our database. So next, we're going to create the table. So remember that here you need to replace the table name with your schema and also your table name. So for example, if your table, if your schema is 
GP1, and you should replace that one into SGP1. And table name, so you, uh, you could give it any name you like. However, I highly recommend we just use indeed. So here I'm still using my demo.indeed schema. And here we can see we are going to create a table within this SQL state uh, code where we create an ID column. So that is serial. So that means every time when we have a new record, the ID will be increased by one. We have a title for the job title, which is a very character. We have the company, location of that job position, salary, and also summary. The summary type will be text because we are not sure that how long the summary will be. And we set the key as primary key as ID. Okay, so every time we have a new record, the ID will be increased by one. Uh, however, you should now you should realize that we cannot check the duplicated records. So um, because ID is serial, so automatically it will be increased by one. So if you collected identical records, it will not violate these primary key constraints. OK, so let's run this one. And let's create that table. So we execute that SQL code and we commit to that one. OK, so now we have a table that in our database. Uh, so you can, if you like, you can open your PG admin and check that table. So next, we are going to parse the HTML. So the HTML that we're going to use is this one, started from indeed, jobs, question mark, Q equals intelligence plus analyst. So that is a keyword that we're going to looking for. So uh, if you look, if you remember that the, the pattern of the URL, OK, so the Q will be the query pattern. So that is something that you typed in this where. Um, and you can see all the intelligence ana analyst. Start 0, 0 is the first page. So if you change that to two, 1, so it will return the result from a second page. And if you change that one to 2, that will return result from the third page. And if you want to change for different um, job. So for example, I want to search for data analytics and starting from zero. So now it will search all the jobs that contain the data analyst. Okay, so that's the pattern that how we can gather information from indeed. So let's keep this one as default. And let's load this one to our um, a notebook. So if you want to see the HTML code, you can. However, I'm not going to do that. So if you are curious, you can just uncomment this line, but I'm not going to do that because that Python code is extremely complicated. So let's run it. Okay, so now that response has been loaded into our Python. Okay, so next we're going to parse the HTML. So uh, if you haven't installed the beautiful soup, you should run this cell since I have already installed. So I'm going to skip that. And next, I'm going to parse that one to beautiful soup. OK, again, if you're interested, you can print the soup object. But here I'm not going to do that because that is a little bit complicated. And next, uh, we are going to use the find all function of the beautiful soup to to locate um, each each individual jobs uh, so here so that is a, the, the the most important part so remember that if you look at the source code okay so that is very 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 complicated so so that's why that we can use this inspect tool so we see inspect and if you check this part and you can move your mouse so that first um, job post and that is the second job post and if you click the first job post you can see that belong to this drv tag so you can see each job post belong to a, a different drv tag where uh, if you we expand that drv tag 
So we can see that's edge tag that contains the job title. Um, and also the salaries that is in this DRV tag salary uh, snippet. And locations. So that is in this DRV tag where class equals location. Uh, and also a very short introduction. So that is in this DRV tag where class equals summary. Okay. However, so you need to start from the root tag, so that soup tag. So you can see this DRV tag belongs to this TD tag. And this TD tag belongs to um, this table where you can see the table where class equals this. And this table actually belong to this table where the row equals presentation. Okay. And that table belongs to, I believe that belong to the body. Okay, belong to this body tag. Okay, so that is the structure. So that's why that in our code, we are from the body tag. We first we find out the table tag which equals result body. Okay, so we print that one. So now within that body tag, we find out the child tag that ID calls page content. Okay, so now we are close. So within that page content table, we are going to find out the TD tag, which the ID called result column. And if you want to print that one, so I'm happy to do that. So, so now you can see it has a lot of DRV tag. So that is tag ID called this. And um, within this, we have each individual. Okay, it's still a little bit complicated, but within this, we have each individual job post. Okay, so that refers to this TD tag. So within this TD tag, we have those each individual DRV tag that contains those job posts. Okay. Uh, so let me again uncomment that. So now we are able to find out each DRV tag. Uh, next, we are going to save the data into our database. Uh, so, so first we find out each separate DRV tag, which class equals this. And we are going to find out the title, company. Actually, we are now going to find out the ratings. And also we are going to find out the location, salary, and also some summary. Some job posts, they have salary or location. Some job posts, we don't. So first, we give each a variable a non default value. And next, we are going to find out the title, uh, the description, etc. by using a nested for loop. So let's just look at the title. So, so now we find out this tag. And we know that the title is, once we find out DRA tag class equal this, the DRA tag should has H2 tag, which class equals title. And the visible part of this H2 tag dot A tag will be the title. So now we can see the Python code. So let's say for DRV tag, we find out H2 tag, which is the title. And we find out the title tag dot A tag, the visible part. And next we strips, we clean the, the title just in case there are some spaces around those titles so we cut those spaces and if the title has special characters like the uh, single quotation mark then we'll change that one to end score so just so that we clean the data so that we will not have problems when we insert into database because in sql we do have special meaning for those single quotation mark and for the other attributes so you can just compare the uh, web pages and also this Python code, see if the Python code can make sense for you. And finally, so we're going to uh, write this SQL in state statement so that you insert. So we're going to insert our table. Again, here you should use your schema and also your table name. Okay, so if your schema is, is GPU1, so you should use GPU1. Okay. 
uh, since I'm using demo, so I still use demo, and also table name is indeed, so table we just created. So we insert into this table, and we have those columns. For each column, we, we use values. And this is the where you can see that the uh, string format will make sense. So because we have all the variables in this Python variables, so if we want to pass those variables within this quotation mark, so that is where we use string format. Okay. However, so um, uh, the dis disadvantage of using string format is that if you have non values, so non values will convert into string now, so that it will no longer be a now n u l l in your database. So that is kind of the disadvantage of using string format. Uh, so if you Google and there are other solutions for that. So for each single of the job post, so we'll execute this insert SQL statement and we commit that change. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, nice, we don't have any errors. And the next, so we can view the table. So we are going to use pandas. We read this SQL. So this SQL is very simple, just basically select everything from this table and let's see the return result. So let's run it. Okay, so now we have some results being returned. Okay, you can see the ID, job title, uh, job company, location, the salary. So some are, do not provide salary information, and also job summary. So summary is just a very few sentences on the on the main page. So we we didn't go to inside of those each single post because that will be even more complicated. Okay. Uh, so if you want to click more of that uh, information, for example, if you want to click the second page, so you can simply change this one to the second page, and we just run it again, and we skip the pip install. Okay, and see if we have new job posts being inserted. Okay, and now you can see we have 30 posts uh, being inserted, and hopefully we don't have any uh, duplicates. Okay, and if you want to insert more, so you can just uh, increase this one to different values. Do not abuse this one, so uh, just click a few bunch of records that would be enough for this lab. So do not say use another for loop to iterate uh, all the process. So that is kind of abuse of the Python code. Although they allow you to do that, but uh, just be cautious that do not abuse uh, indeed the resources. Okay, so now I have uh, almost 40 records, and I think that we would be enough. So starting from here, you can also do some analysis. So for example, you can first aggregate your result in a database by using the SQL code. Uh, so for example, I want to see the, the number of the different job titles as count job from this one and also group by by the job title and order by count descending and let's see how the result look like okay nice so now we have this very nice uh, uh, chart that we can see most common job title is intelligence analysis and the second one is intelligence research specialist okay and remember that we can even visualize those results so for example i can create a bar chart so plot df dot plot dot bar and i say x equals job title okay so now we have a visualization. So 
you can see the most important one is intelligence analysis and also how the other look like. OK, uh, so that is a kind of the, the entire uh, story that uh, what we have learned so far in data mining. So we create tables in relational database by using SQL. We extract data from website by analyzing their HTML code and also by using beautiful soup to parse information that we want and also uh, get the information and also insert the information into our database. And once we have the database uh, result in the database and we can analyze the data by using the SQL code and also by using visual, different type of visualizations. And finally, so remember that uh, you need to close your connections and also your cursor. OK, so now we are done with this. Uh, so we go to the lab. OK, so let's upload this one to our GitHub. OK, let's call it lab six and commit. And also push. OK, and now if we go to our GitHub of this uh, class, we can see that our lab six is just published, and you can sh you can submit this URL URL on Canvas and see that the data that we have uh, collected. 